Hi, I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Rockville and Gaithersburg. Welcome to a very special edition of Kibitzing with Kagan, featuring one of our many talented Democratic candidates for governor. With me today is Tom Perez. Tom, welcome to Kibitzing. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. This is an opportunity for folks to get to know you as a person and not just as a candidate, but we're gonna start with 60 seconds for you to talk about who you are and why you're running. Well, I've lived in Maryland my, the majority of my life. I've lived in Montgomery County the majority of my life. And I am running for governor because I think we have a once in a generation opportunity to move the needle on all the issues that matter to voters. Racial justice, economic justice, climate change, uh, we have we are in the middle of this reckoning as a nation. My entire career has been about fighting for jobs and justice, from serving on the Montgomery County Council to serving as state labor secretary to serving in the Justice Department under Barack Obama to being a civil rights prosecutor to being your labor secretary and most recently as the DNC chair. In all of those jobs, it was about making sure people had access to opportunity. And that's what we're going to do here in Maryland, jobs and justice educational opportunity, so many issues where we have an opportunity to move the needle in meaningful ways. And that's why I'm running for governor to do just that. That's great. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, just, I'm sure anyone watching this podcast would know that DNC is the Democratic National Committee, but I might as well translate it uh, just to be sure. Uh, so Tom, we've got a bunch of different categories and we're gonna start with your childhood. Where did you grow up? Did you have siblings? And what was your birth order? Where are you in birth order? I grew up in Buffalo, New York. I'm the youngest of five. My family emigrated to this country from the Dominican Republic. Uh, they got kicked out, quite frankly, uh, because there was a brutal dictator and uh, they spoke out. And after my dad got out of the army, uh, he served with pride in the U.S. Army. Uh, he got a job at the VA hospital in Buffalo, New York, and that's where I grew up. Great. Did you have pets growing up? Uh, we did not have pets growing up. We have a pet now, and his name is Bubba, and uh, Bubba is a big part of our family. I have seen Bubba in an ad. Bubba's pretty pretty handsome there. <laughs> Bubba is a great dog. Uh, he is a blue tick beagle. We got him. He's a rescue dog. Got him from Lucky Dog, and we were lucky family, and we had him uh, DNA tested, and much to our surprise, he's a 100% uh purebred blue tick beagle and uh, he's a pretty chill dog unless there's a deer or a rabbit around then he goes into what i call defcon one where he <laughs> okay um were you a good student growing up well i tried to be uh i got distracted here and there um i was uh 12 years old when my dad passed away and uh my uh, mother actually got very sick that same year and, um, you know, my parents both taught myself and my siblings that um, you should never get outworked and there's no excuse for uh, being lazy. And so, you know, I had three paper routes as a kid. Uh, I had uh, you know, worked on the back of the trash truck to pay my way through college. Um, and, you know, in school, uh, again, uh, there was just no excuse for getting, uh, you know, for not working hard because I was... You know, I was working my tail off to fund my college. Yeah, and yeah. Um, the last thing you want to do is uh, screw around. That was kind of my theory. Right. Uh, tell us who your favorite teacher was and why. I had a number of favorite teachers. Are you referring to like high school or college or? Pick. Well, I had a, uh, in college, I had a mentor. Uh, his name was Ed Beiser. I was, uh, I, I went to a Jesuit high school, uh, all male. And um, I got to Brown University and, and Brown really transformed me because Brown was such a remarkably diverse learning environment. And here I am, Tom Perez, a uh, Catholic boy from Buffalo. And my mentor is uh, Ed Beiser, uh, an Orthodox Jew from uh, Brooklyn, who uh, really just taught me so much about life. Uh, he worked me hard, he held me accountable and um, for reasons I still don't know, he sort of took a shine to me. And I took two of his courses, did well. And uh, when I was in law school, actually, um, I went to law school up in uh, Boston. 
And uh, I used to come down once a week and TA his course uh, right. at Brown and just stayed friends uh, with him for life. And he had a number of health struggles and he handled them with um, such remarkable uh, dignity. That's what higher ed's about. It's about broadening your horizons. And, um, and he really, he taught me and my experience in college taught me to embrace our rich tapestry of diversity. And when I think about Maryland, uh, the diversity of our state now, we're one of six states in the United States where we have, um, you know, our, the majority of our residents are people of color. And, and when I drive up New Hampshire Avenue in uh, Montgomery County and you, you know, we affectionately call it the highway to heaven, yep. we see the diverse religious traditions. Um, it just, it's such a remarkable uh, strength of who we are as a community here in Maryland. That's great. Um, what was your earliest career fantasy? What did you want to be when you grew up? Well, I wanted to be a baseball player because, you know, when you're Dominican, there's two sports in DR, uh, baseball and politics. Thank as you. I said before, <laughs> politics brought us to this country because of the brutal dictator that my family spoke out against. And uh, baseball was something I played a lot of. Uh, my my challenge was that um, I was a pitcher, and uh, I had a deceptive fastball, uh, and that's to say it was slower than you think, which is why I didn't have a, a long career. But when I was in college, because I had to, you know, work to pay my way through uh, college, the one thing I one of the second jobs I had in college was I was an umpire because I loved the sport. Um, I couldn't afford to continue to try to play. I wasn't good enough to play. Let me be. Yeah. Let me be very yeah. clear. But yeah. I could have, you know, done some stuff, um, American Legion uh, stuff during the summers. But uh, instead, I decided to umpire. So I made a few nickels. Um, that was my night job, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And to this day, baseball is. Uh, I, I coached my son, uh, taking him to a, a World Series clinching game, things like that. It's fun nice. to do. Nice, nice. What was your favorite TV show as a kid? Uh, we watched the Brady Bunch a lot. You know, uh, I was one of five. The Brady Bunch was uh, six kids. Oh, and uh, so, you know, I, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> exactly. Um, we're going to pivot to hobbies. Um, the question is, what's your favorite sport to play or watch? But I think we've done that one. So I will uh, shift yeah. to, uh, have you picked up any new hobbies during COVID? Well, I bike a lot more during COVID because uh, that I stopped going to the gym. Uh, I used to run marathons. I, uh, I ran uh, Boston uh, three times when I was in graduate school. And uh, unfortunately, I, uh, I, basketball and uh, running were the things I did most regularly. And uh, unfortunately, my knees gave out. So that's why I have shifted from basketball and running to uh, to biking and that is something that was very covid uh friendly and you could yes. get out there I, I bike more during uh the heart of covid than probably any time in my life good for you um other than this podcast uh what is a favorite podcast that you would recommend to others well uh i worked with a lot of the um I work, yeah. The I worked with a lot of the Pod Save folks in the administration, um, and so we just, you know, Dan Pfeiffer and a company. We got to be good friends, and so uh, I found myself partial uh, to Pod Save, and uh, they're good guys, and um, and they did a real service when I was on the DNC. They were very helpful in uh, getting the word out and helping us uh, win and helping us um, uh, inspire voters to engage. Thank goodness. Um, is there a TV show that you've binged recently that you'll admit to? Um, you know, we watched uh, a number of them. Uh, uh, the Americans was a really interesting one. I didn't watch it when it was actually on in real time. And I had a number of friends who said, uh, you ought to, uh, you ought to watch that one. And, uh, that was definitely one of our favorites. Okay. Um, there was the one in Pennsylvania. I forgot the name of it. Um, um mayor um mayor uh it was a one of those short ones it was like seven or eight episodes mm -hmm. um she was really good right. uh, uh and i forgot the name of it <clears throat> okay oh uh, we're going to pivot to the arts uh what is your favorite genre of music 
Well, I'm still stuck in my old, uh, my kids would laugh at this question because I, I still listen to a lot of Rolling Stones and uh, uh, music from my era. See, when you're the youngest in your family, you hear your older siblings playing a lot of music when you're growing up. And uh, so I went to a Rolling Stones concert when I was uh, probably 14. Wow. I uh, went to uh, The Who three times uh, by the time I was 19. Nice. So I'm, I'm still, I am still there. Um, and uh, I have grown to like John Legend because I got to know him as the Democratic National Committee Chair. And he is such a... Um, remarkable um uh advocate for our um democracy he was he he did so much for us uh the democratic national convention uh he performed our virtual convention and mm -hmm. did wonderful things so yeah. i do and have and i campaigned with him in ohio he's actually from ohio yes. and he also uh, doing ads on the vaccine and he's yeah now he's um i just i really admire people who um step up Mm -hmm. uh, got to know a guy named Chris Bosch, who is uh, literally uh, just inducted uh, days ago into the Basketball Hall of Fame. And I, I appreciate when people step up yeah. and use their celebrity uh, status to promote uh, inclusion opportunity. Uh, it was it was great. So I just uh, sent him a note the other day because uh, Chris is like six foot eleven. His <laughs> wife, Adrian, is literally probably about 5'2". Oh, my. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite song that is sort of an anthem for you, that lifts you up and inspires you? Um, you know, I, I, I have, um, you know, I listen to a lot of Bruce Springsteen. So uh, I found myself in the uh, anniversary of 9-11 listening to a lot of Bruce Springsteen because I think he inspired us, Yeah. Uh, especially during these moments. Uh, I hated that the Republicans hijacked the American flag as uh, uh, as their own, and and I appreciate that Bruce Springsteen is helping us bring back um, uh, our 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 what he's defining what patriotism is, what it means to be born in the USA, yeah. um, things of that um, nature. What is your favorite arts venue? A place to go see music, film, the arts, concerts, or theater. Yeah, we uh, Wolf Trap is uh, probably our favorite place. Uh, we've seen a number of uh, really good performances there over the years. And um, uh, when I was labor secretary, we had actually um, we had, uh, capacity to get there more frequently. Nice. Uh, because it's run by the Department of the Interior. Yes, I'm aware of that. Um, I used to have a radio show called Curtain Call with Cheryl Kagan on Broadway musicals. Tell us wow. uh, up to five of your favorite Broadway musicals. Well, In the Heights will always be there. I saw it uh, four times, I think. Nice. Um, three on Broadway and one at uh, Olney. Uh-huh. Uh, Olney did a great job. Year. Yeah, I saw the last performance at Olney. Nice. Um, Hamilton would be second. Um, uh, Come From Away, I hope people have seen that because it's very relevant to 9-11. They just mm -hmm. performed it on the mall on the 10th of September. Come From Away is a remarkably inspiring story about 9-11 um, and Gander, Newfoundland, yes. a, a town of 10,000 that used to be very relevant before we had transcontinental air travel because it had a really long runway. And uh, something, it, it, the population doubled basically on uh, 9-11 and it's a story of community coming together uh, and I, I've seen that twice and I uh, got to know the producer because he was a investor in the DNC and uh, mm -hmm. Kenny uh, Elahoff uh, he's from Seattle and uh, I could see that 10 times it's mm -hmm. it's a truly remarkable film and I guess the or a play um, Dear Evan Hansen was another one as well that um, I think really is I find it inspiring Great, great. Um, can you tell us about a book that has had a meaningful impact on your life? Um, Common Ground um, is a book I read probably 30 years ago, mm -hmm. um, maybe longer. It's by uh, J. Um, Anthony Lucas. It's about, um, it, it, it highlights a number of um, 
individuals during uh, the desegregation challenges in Boston. And it, uh, I think he won the Pulitzer Prize uh, for that book. Um, it's a book about civil rights. It's a book about segregation. It's a book about the unfinished business of America. And as a civil rights lawyer, just really, really resonated uh, with me um, to this day. Um, another book I'd recommend to people is um, Boys in the Boat. Um, it's a book about rowing, but it's really not a book about rowing. It's a book about resilience. It's a book about the University of Washington. It's nonfiction. It's a I've book about it. the University of Washington uh, crew team yeah. during the Great Depression. They uh, went to the uh, 36 Olympics, the, you know, the Jesse Owens Olympics in, in Germany. And um, it's just it's just a story of remarkable resilience. So, uh, you know, one of the main protagonists um, during the Great Depression, you know, his, his mother died, his father remarried, his stepmother and father said, well, we just don't have enough money to feed you. So he was on his own as a teenager. And that sort of resonated with me because I lost my dad. But my mom never would have dreamed of telling me I can't afford you, Tom. And um, uh, every person in that boat ended up living lives of purpose i still don't understand why they haven't made a movie out of it yeah um yeah no i loved it and i passed it forward uh, to others okay. um okay we're shifting the next category is personal what is the biggest risk you've ever taken in your life um well i mean professional um the older i've gotten you know some as people age there's an old saying that, you know, the old dog, you know, you, you, you become more risk averse. As I have um, evolved in my career, I've actually had the opposite. I've taken more uh, professional risk. I, you know, people, people who go to law school, and I don't begrudge this, you know, you can go work at a firm, um, make good money. Um, choices I've made in my life have had a lot of financial opportunity costs, but I wouldn't trade them for anything in the world. And, uh, you know, I've taken risk before, um, you know, running for office. Um, I was a career civil rights prosecutor in the Justice Department. I was, I was I loved my work. Uh, and then I got an opportunity to work for Ted Kennedy. And, uh, and then I got an opportunity to come back to the Justice Department as a political appointee. And the occupational hazard of being a political appointee is uh, you can get fired. Right. And uh, Bush v. Gore uh, ended up uh, you know, I was out of a job January 20, 2001 at about 12 noon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world because my career has been an interesting chapter book. And um, you, you never know what's going to happen when you run for office. I took a risk and I ran for county council in 02 and yep. I was not favored. Right. Uh, uh, you know, Doug Duncan had his uh, end gridlock slate right. that year. Most of his candidates won. I was not on that slate. I was um, I was able to be successful because we organized and organized everywhere and took risk. Um, took some risk in 2006 and ran for um, attorney general. Um, that didn't quite work out. Uh, and my late mother, who died in 2005, always said to me she was a six seven day a week church goer, and she always said uh, God has a plan for everyone and there's a reason for everything. And I remember reflecting after my AG race on uh, what she would be saying now. And, and you know what? She turned out to be right because I um, ended up working in the O'Malley administration as labor secretary. That wouldn't have happened if I had uh, had the good fortune of winning the uh, AG race. Wouldn't have become civil rights division head, which was a dream job, and wouldn't have become U.S. labor secretary. So my mom nailed it. There you go. Once again, um, everything happens for a reason. And um i i always tell uh, students that i teach or my kids um you know never hesitate to take um risk you know there's the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you figure out why mm -hmm. you have nothing to do with the former and everything to do with the latter okay. and um you know for me i feel very blessed in that um i feel like the why question for me is making sure people have access to opportunity so fascinating, great stories. I wish I had known your mom. She sounds amazing. Um, have you ever broken a bone? And if so, how? I uh, tore my Achilles okay. uh, playing basketball. 
I have uh, dislocated many fingers playing basketball. <laughs> um, I've uh, had many knee surgeries uh, because of running marathons and go. playing too much basketball. There's a there's a pattern there. Uh, what is your favorite technological gadget or platform uh, other than your phone? Um, I I mean I'm I am uh, I, Twitter is probably my favorite. Okay, um, I know the answer to this one, but do you speak any language or languages other than English? Spanish. Um, what was your first car, and how old were you when you got it? I was uh, 18 years old when I bought for uh, $400, uh, rusted out. Um, I think it was a, a Pontiac, and I forgot what the make was. Okay. But it was uh, it lasted about a year, and uh, the rust got too bad. Okay. Um, tell us about your first crush or first love. Uh dated a woman in college for five years uh, who's a wonderful person and uh, taught me a lot about life uh, and uh, met her in college, freshman nice. week, actually. Nice. Uh, what ticks you off? Uh, people who are phony. I love that. Um, tell us about your kids. We have three kids, 25, 22, and 19. Uh, the one is uh, just moved to Brooklyn. Uh, she um, has been all around the world, did a Fulbright in Columbia, uh, and wants to change the world. Um, my uh, middle kid, uh, Susana, is um, uh, graduated from college a year ago, uh, just left a job working, uh, doing criminal defense work, because she's about to move to Spain to teach English. And uh, my youngest is a sophomore in college. Fantastic. Uh, next category, Tom, is at home. What is your favorite junk food? Pretzels. Okay. What is your least favorite food? Something you just won't eat? Spinach. Okay. What do you cook especially well? I cook picadillo, which is a Dominican dish, uh, ground beef with uh, uh, capers, raisins, uh, balsamic vinegar is one of my mom's dishes. Uh, my kids always ask for the recipe and the recipe is in my head because it was in my mom's head. And whenever they're home, they hope that I make it. Uh, and uh, it's been a family favorite for a long time. Sounds delicious. Go to Cubanos. They have, there's Cuban picadillo and there's Dominican picadillo. They're a little bit different, but uh, uh, they're both really good. Okay. Uh, what is your least favorite household chore? Uh, gutters. Okay. You do them yourself? Not anymore because okay. of my, I've decided that that's something that I can outsource. Uh, we have a community ladder and I no longer use the community ladder. Okay. God bless Tacoma Park. Um, God forbid your house is on fire. Other than people and pets, what would you hope to save? Oh, photos, um, relics of our family together. Yes. Uh, next category is travel. What is the best vacation you've ever taken? After my oldest daughter uh, graduated uh, college, I believe it was, uh, we went to Italy and a friend of ours uh, gay, lent us uh, a home she had there and uh, we had a wonderful 10 days in Italy as a family. Nice, very nice. Um, what is a favorite place in Maryland that you've discovered maybe on the campaign trail? Uh, I mean, there are a number of uh, places, uh, you know, out in uh, Western Maryland. I mean, I've, we've been to Rocky Gap and to uh, Deep Creek uh, numerous times when our kids were young uh, and those places are really special because we had a special time as a kid. So every time I go there, uh, it makes me think of when my kids were young and uh, we had a lot of fun time. Nice, nice. Do you have a favorite bar or restaurant in Maryland? You just mentioned Cubanos. Would that be it or yeah. something else? Well, I go here in Tacoma Park. We often go to the Olive Lounge, uh, which is right in downtown Tacoma. They have really good Middle Eastern food. And uh, uh darn good beer selection. Very nice. Okay. If COVID time and money were not an object, where would you want to travel? 
we moved here from Colorado, so we've we get out there a fair amount. Uh, we did a nice, we did a wonderful vacation a while back in um, Glacier, and uh, it's just it's such a remarkable area to be able to hike, bike, and uh, appreciate nature. Nice. Um, what is something you always bring with you when you travel? Books. Good. Okay. Uh, briefly, social media. Um, what percentage of your Facebook posts and tweets do you write yourself? Um, probably 20%, 30%. I have a good team and uh, uh, they know my voice and uh, they, it enables me to do more. So we talk about things and, uh, and I trust them to do it. Great. Uh, we are shifting to politics, if you can imagine such a thing. Uh, let's start with a, a really important but softball question, I guess. Why are you a Democrat? Because the Democratic Party has been always the party of everybody. We are the party of the many. Republicans are the party of the few. Have you ever been disappointed by a Democratic candidate or elected official? And when? Uh, I was, I mean, I've been disappointed. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, an example. Um, yeah, you know, I was disappointed in Bill Clinton. I mean, uh, during impeachment, um, I, I have great respect for the president, but uh, you can't respect uh, what happened there. Yes. It's not acceptable. Okay. Uh, when did you first think about running for office? Well, I ran for president when I was in the seventh grade and I had the good fortune of winning. So uh, that, that started there. Um, yeah, I've always, every point in time, every professional point in time I'm at, I um, ask the question, where can I make the biggest difference? And after I left the Clinton administration, I asked the question, where can I make the biggest difference? And I thought local government was the place to do it. And it was a real privilege. So that's when I, 2001 is when I really first started thinking seriously about running. Great. Uh, on a scale of one to a hundred, with one being the very, very most right-wing conservative and a hundred being the very, very most left-wing liberal, where would you place yourself ideologically? See, I, I think those questions are, are not good questions with all due respect, Cheryl, okay. because I think we, we try to, we try to pigeonhole everyone. You've got to be this, you've got to be that. When Ted Kennedy, Ted Kennedy once said to me, when someone asks you, what wing of the party are you from? Tell them you're from the accomplishments wing because you want to get sh stuff done. And that's where I'm from. I'm proud of what I have done. I was the first cabinet secretary in US history confirmed by a straight party line vote. Uh, because when I read the civil rights division, we did edgy stuff and I'm really proud of it. But I, I'm really, I, I think we need to move away from trying to label someone. I want people to listen to what I'm doing, listen and, and listen to what other candidates are doing and make those judgments. Okay. Uh, because I really do believe that we get ourselves in trouble. And that's why when I was on the DNC, I tried to bring us all together. Stop asking, are you a Bernie Democrat? Are you a Hillary Democrat? Uh, that Those conversations ended up being, I think, counterproductive. And I'm proud that I have a lot of support from folks who supported Bernie Sanders, folks who supported Hillary Clinton, folks who supported other folks, because we're looking at the future and how we can be together. Okay, that's a great answer. Uh, can you tell us a political shero or hero, living or dead? Well, for me, um, you know, Ted Kennedy was my original political mentor. Um, he uh, taught me about um, the fact that uh, politics is about helping people. All politics is personal. Um, and uh, idealism and pragmatism can never be mutually exclusive. And so um, having had the opportunity um, to work for him was wonderful. And having had the opportunity to interview uh, John Lewis um, a couple of times, actually, including when I was labor secretary, he always sort of took me under his wing and, yes. um, I really appreciated that. So those are two real giant figures for me. That's great. We are getting near the end, but can you, uh, take a moment and give a pitch for a nonprofit that you support personally? Well, um, Casa Maryland, uh, I used to serve on the board 
of CASA and uh, served as board chair. And I think CASA does uh, so much for our immigrant communities, including but not limited to, and this is important, including but not limited to our Latino uh, community. Um, our immigrant communities here in Maryland are spectacular and they are why we are great and we need to support them. And I urge everybody uh, to embrace our uh, immigrant partners in this uh, community. Um, can you talk briefly about what the murders of Freddie Gray and George Floyd and too many others and the Black Lives Movement, Black Lives Matter movement has meant to you? Well, the more things change, the more they stay the same. You know, I was prosecuting police misconduct cases starting in the late 80s. I prosecuted an LAPD officer pre-Rodney King. Um, when I saw Freddie Gray, when I see these other uh, cases, I, I think to myself, wow, I did so many people have done so much to address this, and yet there's so much more work to do. And at the same time, this is a moment of opportunity to reflect and to make sure we learn from this. And the Maryland General Assembly, the, the Democrats in the Senate and the House, and I applaud all of you, um, you turned that tragedy into action. And that's what we have to do at this moment. Great, thank you. Um, think of a scenario when we get, Maryland gets a whole windfall of federal funds. You're governor of our state in this scenario, and you are the only person making the decision. Where would you spend it? Well, first of all, I would never want myself to be the only person making the decision. I think the best decisions are decisions where you've engaged a lot of people and you've gotten their opinions. And I've been successful in um, the places I've had the privilege of leading because I think good leaders are good listeners. So um, that, that to me would be the, the first point. Uh, you know, we, have, we have to grow our jobs. We have to uh, I think I want us to be the first state in the country where 100% of the people have access uh, to health care. I want us to invest in our children's education from the moment they are born through uh, adulthood. I want us to make sure that um, we're investing money uh, to uh, address climate change, and we can do this. Um, we're not living up to our potential as a state. And I wanna make sure we do live up to our potential. We have to stop punching below our weight. Great. The last question, Tom Perez. Uh, it's the way I end every one of my podcast interviews, which is what is your hidden secret superpower? What is a skill or talent that you have? Something that most folks can't do. Well, I just never, um, I'm never gonna get outworked. And um, I think that's really important uh, because, uh, the, as I said to you earlier in this podcast, there's just no excuse for getting outworked. And, uh, and, and again, my mother taught me, um, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. And um, I think my um, listening over the course of my career and, and bringing on good people over the course of my career has enabled us to get a lot done. That's great. Well, Tom Perez, it's been a pleasure kibitzing with you today. Thank you so much for taking the time. And I My look pleasure. forward to seeing you soon you. on the campaign trail. Great. Thanks so much. Take care.